Hello, Manhattan. Welcome to Channel 8 News. I'm Katie Lee Pym. And I'm Caitlin Spaney. We have a packed show for you today, so stick around. Today's show. Our military past and present get a day of honor and celebration on Veterans Day. We get an update on one brave woman's battle with cancer. And we get to learn a little bit more about traditional French cuisine from a native of France. All this and more coming up on Channel 8 News. This is Channel 8 News, KKSU LP. For Manhattan and Riley County. From Kansas State University. This is Channel 8 News. We've seen some cooler weather this past week. Will we continue to see the similar temperatures into the holiday season? Our weatherman, Greg Jansen, is outside to tell us what we can expect. Thank you, Katie and Caitlin. As you can see, it's sunny outside. Uh, didn't stop it from being pretty cool this morning, though, but uh, it will warm up, up throughout the day. And uh, once we get inside to our five-day forecast, we'll take a look at that and see how it looks this weekend for the football game. Katie and Caitlin, back to you. As we all know, the weather can turn dangerous at times. Typhoon Haiyan recently struck the Philippines and has been recorded as one of the worst typhoons on record. Has ty as Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines on Friday with 147 mile an hour winds, has been recorded as one of the worst storms in history. At least 10,000 have been killed, but final numbers is still yet to be tallied. Many Filipinos are without food or shelter and the entire world is watching. K-State senior Zaldi Du Young An has family living in Philippines and has been worried about their safety as they endure the hardships of the typhoon as family was among the lucky and managed to miss the worst of the storm. That was a big relief to, to hear from him just because like that's scary. Yeah. Zaldi recently tweeted asking for support for the victims of the typhoon, urging his followers to donate $10 by texting aid to 27722. This aid effort is supported by the United Nations World F Food Program. A Riley County teen has, uh, that ran away in late September was found living with Wichita man in a motel. 25-year-old Chavez Taylor was charged recently by prosecutor with aggravated human trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation of a child. Taylor was charged with drug possession with the intent to sell with a 1,000 feet of a school. Taylor's arrest came after the 16-year-old girl went to the Wichita police. According to the police reporter, she referred to Taylor as a boyfriend. In other local news, over a pound of marijuana and $940 was recovered when the Riley County Police Department and the Pottawatomie County Sheriff served a search warrant on November 7th. 20-year-old Aaron Norris was arrested in his home and was confined on a $10,000 bond. The Riley County Police Department recently has responded to complaints of minor theft and criminal damage to property. RCPD would like to remind you to lock your doors and windows and report all suspicious activity in a timely manner. Those choosing to participate in the legal consumption of alcohol are reminded to know and stick to your limit, as alcohol can become a factor in your risk of becoming a victim or suspect of crime. Monday was Veterans Day, a day to both honor and celebrate our veterans. Manhattan had multiple Veterans Day events. Many residents turned out to see the Veterans Day Parade. The Veterans Day Parade in Manhattan featured marching bands, grade schoolers, and even Uncle Sam himself. Olivia Payne was excited to be part of the parade. Um, yes, um, I'm very excited to sing the parade. She also knew it was for a good cause. Um, serving our country for all the people that have served our country to keep us free. Senator Jerry Moran was the Grand Marshal of the parade. 
Well, it's great to be here in Manhattan, here in a community uh, near Junction City, uh, near Fort Riley, that understands the value of military service. It's one of the great things about our communities here is how much they care about our soldiers, but also how much they care about the families uh, of those soldiers. And today we're here to pay our respects, to express our gratitude to those who've served our country uh, throughout its history. Senator Moran says that one of his priorities is to improve the quality of services provided by the VA. One of the things that I want to make certain that we do is always uh, provide the benefits and health care that our veterans were promised. Uh, we've, um, we've done a, a reasonable job in regard to health care. The benefits circumstance is terrible. The waiting line is long uh, and we've got to cut through the bureaucracy at the Department of Veterans Affairs. And that's front and center for me and I hope my colleagues in Congress. For Channel 8 News, I'm Jason Beats. As always, taking care of our veterans remains a concern to many. It looked like everyone had a lot of fun at that parade. We're going to take our first commercial break, uh, but up next is another story honoring our veterans, so stay right here. You won't want to miss it. A wildcat legacy from generation to generation. Where my grandfather went to school. Where my mother went to school. It's a legacy scholarship program started by the K-State Alumni Association, specifically for the children and grandchildren of K-State alumni. When you buy a K-State license plate, you fund legacy scholarships. Show your purple pride and be a part of the Wildcat legacy. Since opening its doors, the International Animal Health and Food Safety Institute has had literally thousands of people take advantage of the facilities and academic programs that are being developed. K-State Olathe offers a unique opportunity for scientists from industry and academia to work side by side, focused on addressing real life issues and training the workforce. Progress is being achieved. K-State Olathe, now open for business. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. I'm Katie Lee Pam. We are back with our reporter Jason Beats to talk a little bit more about activities to honor our veterans. A free breakfast is offered to veterans who served in wars from Korea and Vietnam to Iraq and Afghanistan. On Veterans Day, Kansas State University military veterans and the American Legion held a breakfast for veterans and their families. Harold Cardwell, a Vietnam veteran, expressed concern for veterans of the Iraq and Afghan wars. And I really feel sorry for these guys over in Iraq and Afghanistan and all that. Some of those guys have made five tours. I made two tours to Vietnam, and that was kind of unusual. There wasn't a whole lot of us. And there were a few that made more. But it's a sacrifice, being away from your family. It's the hardest part of it all. Harold was not wounded in battle, but he did develop medical problems as a result of his service. No, sir. I got, uh, that's one medal I never wanted. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody, oh, he's not here today. Uh, I wound up with diabetes as a result of Vietnam, the Agent Orange, they say. So that's why I'm in this thing. Uh, neuropathy to my legs. I can't walk very far. Now I can get up and I can walk, stand up, but uh, I can't walk very far. As always, it's important to show our veterans our support. It's always great to see acts of kindness and to honor our brave veterans. Channel 8 News has part three of our continuing series about Tina Sheaves, her family and their brave struggle with cancer. Tina was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2009 after chemotherapy to fight that cancer. She later developed myelofibrosis. Channel 8 reporter Kathy Dole is here to bring us the very latest on Tina and her family's struggle with cancer. 
Thanks, guys. <coughs> Tina allowed me to get very close to her in a very emotional moment. I was invited into her hospital room at KU Med Center while she received her bone marrow transplant. What you are about to see is a very emotional and difficult moment for this family. Lassie, you can see exhaustion on their faces. But this is a special day. This is the day Tina Sheaves receives her bone marrow transplant. The chemotherapy that she received for this transplant were more directed at killing her immune system. So we get a foreign donor's immune system to become established and grow in her. Even after six chemo treatments, Tina is still smiling when the bone marrow arrives. Three, four, six. All right, it looks great. It's kind of like a new blood. You take care, Tina. Thank you. Nice. See you later. Bye. It, was, it was quite humbling, I mean, to see that that bag held life. Her husband stands guard as the music that soothes her nerves plays in the background. They either this transplant's going to work or it's not going to work. So it doesn't, it's, it's not part way. It's got to work or it's not going to work and we're going to lose her. Tina will remain a patient at KU Med until the first week of December. Between now and Christmas, they will know if the transplant was successful. In the meantime, friends of the Shee's family here in Manhattan are doing all they can to support the family. The Kansas State Police Department hosted a fundraiser to benefit the Shee's family. Last Friday night, friends and family gathered at Kite's Bar and Grill. Kite's donated the venue and food. There was karaoke and local businesses donated items for a silent auction. The total raise so far is $3,300, but there's still one item up for grabs. Big Poppy Bikes donated a 2013 Giant Avail Inspire. This bike's graphics are designed by a cancer survivor each year and 10% of retail sales are donated to cancer research. Tickets are $10 and you can get yours at Big Poppy Bikes or through the Kansas State University Police Department. Here at Channel 8 News, we know that many lives are touched by cancer every day. I'm joined now by reporter Emily Waring, and together we're going to register to be bone marrow donors. Emily, how has your life been touched by cancer? Um, recently, my mother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and now she is going through the chemo treatment to cure her cancer. Okay. Um, I visited deletebonecancer.org and registered at home for a cheek swabbing kit. Thanks to the U Times 2 campaign, I have a swabbing kit here and Emily has graciously agreed to be my partner. So we're gonna just split okay. these kits. Take out the little hard envelope. Inside are two swabs that we're going to use to just swab our cheeks for 15 seconds. Take a final, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. And just, they said gently just rub your cheeks, so. Okay together. On three? Yeah. One, two, three. Are you counting? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna count. Okay. It's 15. Okay. And we're just gonna drop it back in the envelope and then do the other cheek. Okay. That's what they told me. Okay. And it's as simple as that. It took about 10 days for my kit to arrive, and you can do it all from the comfort of your home. If you want to be a bone marrow donor, the Kansas State University Bone Marrow Registration Organization can help you get registered to save a life. Or you can register online at deletebloodcancer.org. Next week, we'll continue Tina's story with a closer look at someone very special to her. And now we're gonna take a short break. Back to you at the desk. Around here, school pride isn't just some slogan on a t-shirt. It's the spirit that comes from understanding we are stronger when we're together. That's the essence of K-State Proud, a nationally recognized student-led fundraising campaign. In just six years, K-State Proud has helped raise more than half a million dollars to help students who need it most. 
and appreciate it best. Think of it as Philanthropy 101. K-State Proud. It's just one more way the Kansas State family treats one another, well, like family. Where there's a Wildcat, there's a way. It was the day the music nearly died. Little remained after a 1968 fire roared through Nichols Hall at Kansas State University, reducing the music department to rubble. But before the embers of that terrible fire had even died, a new fire blazed within every member of the Wildcat band. Using the only sheet music that survived the fire, the band pumped up the next home crowd with a rousing rendition of Wabash Cannonball. To this day, the jingle, the rumble, and the roar still fire up the fans and brings them to their feet. Where there's a Wildcat, there's a way. Welcome, Welcome back. back to our Join On Set with Jared from the Sunset Zoo. Can you tell us a little about who you have here? Yeah, this is um, a cane toad. They are originally from the uh, southern United States, uh, Central America, and South America. But the, uh, the cane toad actually has a very storied past. He uh, was introduced in the early 1900s in Australia and became a very uh, nuisance animal, an invasive species. He, uh, they introduced him to take care of the cane beetle um, that was causing havoc in their in their agricultural industry and so they introduced him and he's done a lot more than just take care of the cane beetle he's become a, a very much a nuisance animal in, in australia but um he's a very large frog um he's actually pretty small right now he'll get um at, at least probably um he'll add another couple of inches um and they'll they'll get in size about three pounds total wow uh, what is he, what is all this liquid that's coming out of it? <laughs> that's one of his defense. He actually has a couple defense mechanisms and one is to urinate. And so we'll get that cleaned up later. But he also is, um, is poisonous. And so um, you don't want to ingest or anything like that. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he does secrete uh, a poison across his body as well. So. And what? You're touching him. <laughs> okay. well, thank you very thank much. You. Not a problem. Are you used to eating on the go? Classes and busy schedules many times will lead that. While this may be accepted in the American culture, it would not be in France. Channel 8 reporter Ananise Franchetti has the story. Many American students juggle busy schedules and sometimes don't have time to enjoy their meals as French people are accustomed to. American culture. <laughs> French culture. The cultures have different values, one being the way they value a meal. Americans are used to eating fast and on a go. The French are used to sitting down and enjoying quality family times during a meal. As a native from France, Sylvain Farigoul says the family gets a great value of being together. I don't think we eat fast in France. We take our time, uh, especially uh, with your family or or with your friends. Nobody has to use his phone or we don't have to watching the TV while we are eating. Just conversation, Just conversation and to talk. Is that offensive if we do that in France? Yeah. Whether it's mealtime for the French or the Americans, the togetherness of family makes this moment special. Mm -hmm. For Channel 8 News, I'm Anis Frankiri. <laughs> <laughs> Like Dinner is more a family tradition than a necessity. French families share an intimate moment reunited in front of a good meal. American customs do not pay this kind of attention to food. People are often on a rush, eat and go, or sometimes keep their meal because of a lack of time. That's crazy. Where are you from exactly? I'm from France, Paris exactly. Paris? Yeah. And, and what are you doing here? I'm um, studying K-State. Yeah? What are you studying? Uh, for the moment, I am studying English, but I want to join the journalism and mass communication major. Awesome, thank you. Hopefully, with the upcoming holidays, we will get more time to sit and have quality meal time with our families and friends. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up, we will have an update on the weather and a recap of K-State sports. Look at me, I'm so cute and cuddly. I'm also very charming. I'll tell you what you want to hear and sweep you off your feet. 
I'm also spontaneous, maybe a little erratic at times. I take risks most people wouldn't, but that makes me fun. I'm also very persuasive. I can convince you to do something you'd never dream of doing. And you'll love my stories. I usually stretch the truth a little bit, but you'll believe me because I'm such a good liar. I'm never wrong, and I never feel guilty. I always win, but just look how cute and innocent I look. I can fool you, your parents, I can even fool your friends. Trust me. We're back with weatherman Greg Jansen. Greg, how does the weather look for this upcoming week? Well, it actually looks pretty good. It's been a little cold recently. Have you guys been mm, experiencing yeah, that? Yes. You guys plan on going out to the game this weekend? Yes. yes. Well, it will be very nice for that. Well, for now, let's go ahead and take a look outside. Outside, you can see uh, the leaves have pretty much fallen off all the trees. They were so pretty just uh, less than a week ago. But uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, national weather map. And so you see in Seattle, partly cloudy, uh, pretty you know, moderately chilly up there, but down in Los Angeles, you can see it's uh, 88, pretty sunny. I, uh, I'm jealous of that myself. If we can get this figured out. Here in Denver, uh, you can see it's gonna be 65 today. Uh, and this weekend, as you might know, the Kansas City Chiefs are gonna be playing the Denver Broncos. And here we are back again. Uh, and so, uh, you see that might be a good time if you're going out to travel to that game. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, then that might be some nice weather for you. Uh, here over on the East Coast, oh, here in uh, Kansas, <laughs> we've got uh, Topeka is looking pretty nice. Actually, really sunny all across the board, all around the state. Uh, Manhattan, though, I think may have the best weather. So let's go ahead and take a look at our five-day forecast for here in Manhattan. Tonight, mostly clear, uh, high 55, low 32. If you go home, you might want to turn on your heater for uh, tonight when you get home from school or work. Might be beneficial for you. Tomorrow, pretty much most of the same. Uh, but here, let's take a look at our weekend. Uh, Friday, we've got a high of 60, but it's really going to start to warm up on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and just in time for the TCU football game, if you want to go tailgating, that might be good for you. Uh, be nice temperature and go ahead and uh, invite me to tailgate, actually. That'd be a lot of fun. So anyways, Katie and Caitlin, back to you. Thanks for the update, Greg. It's now time to see how our Wildcats did in the sports this past week. Give us an update, Alex. It is one of the busiest times of the year for college sports. Football, volleyball, and basketball are among the teams sporting the Wildcat purple on the field and court. If you love college sports, this is an exciting time. John Hubert helped lead K-State football to a 49-26 win at Texas Tech in Lubbock. Hubert had 157 yards on 23 carries. Daniel Sams had a productive day with 81 yards on 11 carries. Ryan Mueller, the Big 12 sacks leader and nation sack leader, added 3.5 sacks to up his total to 10.5. He also earned Big 12 Player of the Week for the second straight week. The football team will return home Saturday to play Big 12 foe TCU. The Volleycats hosted the Mountaineers of West Virginia. The Lady Wildcats took care of business by sweeping the Mountaineers in straight sets. Caitlin Pelger placed, paced the team with 16 kills. As a team, K-State had 40 kills compared to West Virginia's 23. Freshman Kirsten Kober had a team high 12 of K-State's 40 four digs in the match. The Wildcats will head to Lawrence Saturday for the second edition of the Sunflower Showdown. Both women's and men's basketball had their debut Friday. K-State Athletics came up with a creative way to pack Bramlage by giving out over 300 pounds of bacon to those who attended. The women didn't disappoint as they crushed Tennessee State with a 85 to 53 victory and against Tennessee State. Leticia Romero led the team with 16 points the woman will be traveling to El Paso to face UTEP on Saturday. The men's team struggled to score all night and fell to Northern Colorado by the score of 60-58. to One bright spot for the Wildcats was freshman Wesley Awundu, who recorded a double-double with 14 points and 10 rebounds. K-State will take on Oral Roberts and Bramlage tonight at 7 p.m. And I can tell you that if you are a sports fan, this really is your time of year. Back to you, Caitlin and Katie. Thank you. Greg and Alex for the reports. We are going to take one last commercial break, so stay right here. K-State Student Radio brings every game to K-State fans on the Wildcat 91.9.
Klein's going to take a pitch out to the right. Hubert dices his way up and in the end zone for the Wildcat touchdown. Takes the snap. He's going to roll out. He's going to throw deep over the middle of the field for Tyler Lockett. Catches it. 15-10, 5 touchdown, Kansas State. For all of your K-State sports coverage, tune into the Wildcat 91-9. The Riley County Police Department and our bike team would like to remind drivers that texting and driving is illegal and dangerous. Remember not to text and drive. Thanks for staying tuned. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Channel 8 KSU and on Facebook at Channel 8 News KSU. If you need something to do this weekend, K-State student Britt Burr wrote and directed a play, What Will Be Showing in the Purple Mask Theater. Sex Ed, What Wasn't Covered is a comedic and informal play about sexual education pertaining to the LGTB community. The play is based on true stories of the people who dealt with varying sexual issues. The play is showing on November 14th, 15th, and 16th in the Purple Mass Theater. There will be a remote, a remote on December 1st, which is World AIDS Day. All performances are at 7.30 p.m. with the house opening for seating at 7. It is free for the public, but donations will be collected with proceeds going to AIDS research. Let's hear one last time from Greg about the current weather. Greg, what's it feel like out there? Well, thank you guys. Uh, really beautiful, not a cloud in the sky out here. If you want to go out, maybe go to Manhattan Hill, top of the world, whatever you want to do out today. Uh, this might be one of the last days to do it. Again, this weekend would be good as well, but after this, might be too cold for that. Katie and Caitlin, back to you. Thanks, Greg. That's wrap it up for the week. For more news throughout this week, follow us on Twitter at Channel 8 KSU and Facebook Channel 8 News KSU. And don't forget to text the word AID to 27722 to donate the support and of the typhoon victims. Also, tickets for the bike raffle benefiting Tina and her fight against cancer are still going to be sold at Big Poppies for $10. And can you believe that that frog that the I can't believe the toad? It, it peed on the, the yeah, desk. Yeah, I was kind of and it was like coming at you. I, I don't yeah. know. Were you threatened? I was a little. I was a little scared. And then I like bumped my elbow. It was horrible. Anyway, from Katie, Alex, Greg, and myself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Stay classy, Manhattan. Since opening its doors, the International Animal Health and Food Safety Institute has had literally thousands of people take advantage of the facilities and academic programs that are being developed. K-State Olathe offers a unique opportunity for scientists from industry and academia to work side by side, focused on addressing real life issues and training the workforce. Progress is being achieved. K-State Olathe, now open for business.